Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a cubic equation. We have A plus BI to the third power equals I and we're going to be solved for A and B. What's this channel called? A plus BI. Exactly, so we're going to cube the channel. Now, to be able to solve this problem I'll be presenting two methods and I saw this problem in a math book complex numbers by someone I can't remember the author sorry about that but if I do find out I'll let you know that kind of looks interesting it looked interesting to me and I wanted to share with you anyway so first method we're gonna go ahead and cube a plus b i when you cube a plus b you get a cubed plus b cubed plus 3 a b times a plus b. At, at least that's how I cube it and I actually use this version uh, with my cubic formula or for the cubic formula but what happens if you replace b with bi you get a variation of this and it looks like this a cubed plus bi cubed plus 3abi times a plus bi or you could use the binomial theorem this is the binomial theorem I just use this version and now this is supposed to equal i Let's go ahead and simplify the left hand side or the middle side. Uh oh. So go ahead and simplify this. i cubed is negative i, so this is going to become a cubed minus bi. And then here we're going to distribute. It's going to give us 3a squared bi. And i times i is i squared. That's negative 1. So we're going to get negative 3ab squared. That's equal to i. Okay? Let's go ahead and put the real parts together. a cubed minus 3ab squared plus 3a squared b minus b as the imaginary part times i equals i. So when two complex numbers are equal, what do we say? So for example, if a plus bi is c plus di, then we can say two things, right? a equals c and b equals d. It's kind of like a two-dimensional thing. Not only one thing, but two things. Kind of like equating two linear polynomials, right? So from here, we get that the real part of this complex number, i, is 0 because it's imaginary, right? And the imaginary part is supposed to be 1. So we get a system of equations. Let's go ahead and write that down and solve that system. That system is actually kind of like a homogeneous system. And this is supposed to be... A b cubed I think right forgot to cube the b yep and this should be a b cubed so this is 0 and this is 1 great you know this is a homogeneous system and we can kind of change variables here it's not necessary because we have 0 that's good let's factor out an a this is kind of like a you know this one is actually the kind of like a really nice homogeneous equation and we get a squared minus 3b squared equals 0. So from here, we consider two cases. Case 1, a equals 0. Now, if a is equal to 0, with the second equation, we're getting negative b cubed equals 1, which implies b cubed equals negative 1, which implies b equals negative 1. Awesome. So a equals 0 implies b equals negative 1. That gives us an ordered pair, which I will write at the end. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second piece, second factor. That comes from the first equation that is a squared minus 3b squared equals 0 or a squared equals 3b squared now you, you don't get a value from here but you can use this in the second equation by way of substitution so if you replace a squared with 3b squared you get the following 3 times 3b squared is 9b cubed right minus b cubed equals 1 and that is 8b cubed equals 1. That is b cubed equals 1 over 8. That is b equals 1 over 2. Remember, a and b are real numbers because that's what makes up a complex number, like in the form of a plus bi. So, assuming a squared equals 3b squared gave us b equals 1 half, so from here we can find a, a squared rather, uh, equals 3 times 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths, and from here we get two a values, root 3 over 2, and they, sh they should be familiar to you if you've done a little bit of trigonometry, right? And it'll be become more apparent with the second method, of, of course. So, those are the 
pairs we got, and since we're looking for a plus bi, a plus bi is our complex number, it can be 0 minus i, which is negative i. It can be root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i, or it can be negative root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. Awesome. So there are three solutions, and that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because we had a cubic equation at the very beginning, a plus bi cubed equals i. So obviously, this would give us a cubic equation, but there are two variables. But guess what? We can solve for two variables in a single equation. Okay? Make sense? So far, so good? All right. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method, and then we're going to look at some results from from alpha if I did not forget to include them. Okay. So we have a plus bi to the third power equals i. Now, this should tell you immediately, and I'm pretty sure most of you have thought about it, maybe all of you, that this is our complex number z. So z cubed equals negative i. I mean positive i. Sorry about that. So in other words, we are looking for a number whose cube is equal to i, which means we're looking for cube roots of i. Wow. So I say cube roots because a complex number has three cube roots, except for zero. Of course, zero only has one, right? So how do you find them? Well, we can use Euler's formula, the polar form, which makes it a lot easier. So I can write z cubed equals i as i can be, th uh, you can think of i as the number 0, 1 on the imaginary axis because no real part. And then the argument is going to be pi over 2. And of course, its modulus is 1. So we have everything we need. How do you write a complex number as r times e to the i theta? Since r is 1, I don't need to worry about it. This is e to the power i times pi over 2. But one thing to keep in mind, there are multiple values, right? Obviously. So we should write it as add just a multiple of 2 pi to this. And then to find the cube root, we're going to go ahead and divide this by 3. So everything will be divided by 3. And it's actually going to look like this. Like the first root is going to be e to the power i. And by the way, uh, I can kind of find the generic, not the square root, the generic cube root as e to the power i times pi over 6 plus 2 pi and over 3. Obviously, you can make a common denominator and do some other stuff. But in this case, let's find out. For n equals 0, I'm going to get i times pi over 6. And that is actually cosine pi over 6 plus i sine pi over 6. I'm going to get to it in a little bit. The second root is going to be e to the power. You either know that every time you're going to be adding the one-third of 2 pi to this, which is, in this case, is going to be 2 pi over 3 or 4 pi over 6. So the next one is going to be i times 5 pi over 6. I could probably use dot instead of parentheses. And this is going to be cosine 5 pi over 6, which is 300 degrees, by the way. And then the third one for n equals 2, I'm getting e to the power i times. Now, if you had another 4 pi over 6, 9 pi over 6, which is going to give you 3 pi over 2. And that's going to be cosine 3 pi over 2 plus i sine 3 pi over 2. Now, cosine pi over 6 is cosine 30, which is going to be uh, root 3 over 2 plus 1 half i. And this is in the third quadrant, so its cosine is going to be positive, but its sine is going to be, wait a minute, is that right? No, that's actually, never mind. This is 150 degrees. What am I talking about? This is 150 degrees, so it's in the second quadrant. It has a negative cosine and a positive sine. We should agree with our first solution. And cosine of 3 pi over 2, if you think about the unit circle right here, cosine 3 pi over 2 is 0, and sine 3 pi over 2 is 1. So we get the exact same solutions, but a lot easier, because this problem was actually designed for giving a chance to find the cube roots of i. But kind of disguises a little bit. Anyways, this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.